Hello, I'm Phil Dorado, author of The 60 Second Leader. I have a list of products I want to read to you. I want to see if you can figure out what they have in common. Anesthesia, cellophane, cholesterol-lowering drugs, cornflakes, dynamite, ice cream soda, nylon, penicillin, photography, smallpox vaccine, stainless steel, and Teflon. There is one item I've left off the end, which I'll tell you now, which gives the game away. Post-it notes. Yes, it's generally well known that post-it notes were the result of a glue that didn't work that 3M had invented. They were a retrospective application based on taking an accident and turning it into something with value. And my contention to you is that that's what you need to do in the way you manage and lead innovation within your organisation. Most large organisations have a pretty rigorously scientific approach to innovation, not just in the products that you produce, but in the processes and the, the ways of working that you try and innovate with. You'll have a pipeline with gates, new ideas coming in, being tested, coming out of gates halfway down the pipeline if it turns out they don't quite work at that stage. But what I'd suggest to you is based on the work of Robert Austin, a Harvard professor, who says that, says that a far more effective way of leading innovation is to look at how artists innovate. He studied artists and found that much of their work is based on happy accidents. They splash things around, errors happen, and they home in on where the value is, and then they develop that. Now, this doesn't have to happen just within your organisation. You can do this with products of yours that are out there in the marketplace already, this accidental pro approach to finding useful innovations. Gary Hamill, the strategist, once told a story about a manufacturer of microwaves. He wanted to see exactly what was being done with the microwaves that they made. So they installed webcams in the dorm of students, with the students' permission, in the kitchen, pointed at all the electrical equipment on, on the kitchen benches. They discovered that the microwaves were being used not to cook food, but mostly to dry socks, underpants, and occasionally t-shirts, which obviously wasn't what they'd intended when they made the thing in the first place. But what turned this into a happy accident was that same company is now developing a whole range of small footprint microwave clothes dryers. Because by delving into why people were sticking their socks in the microwave, they realised that traditional tumble dryers are far too large for students who might only have a small amount of washing to get done when they do do the washing. And that microwaves have a small footprint and can sit on the kitchen bench far more easily. So look at what your customers are currently doing with your products and your services to find out what unmet needs are, that with a slight tweak, without a great deal of investment in new innovation, which was what your traditional scientific pipeline will, will do for you, how with a slight tweak you can turn accidents into happy innovations.